do we watch on TV? We watch epic dramas, side splitting comedies, quality video gaming coverage, New Game Plus 9.30 p.m. Wednesdays on Channel 31 Melbourne and Geelong. And of course, we watch sport. And we watch these competitions between the best in all of its flavours, from football to spelling to this. The crowd goes wild and nails it, and he gets the 27 foot bumper, and Bo and Crystal McLaren our Eastern Regional Champions. Ha 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 ha, can we just spend the rest of the time watching these dog videos? No, no, ugh, fine. More recently, we've seen eSports included in this sporting roster. American networks have broadcast Counter-Strike and Street Fighter. Even Australia is dabbling with eSports broadcasting, with local network 7Mate taking time out of its rolling Big Bang Theory repeats to show Australia competing in the Overwatch World Cup last year. Now, this isn't the first time that competitive gaming has appeared on TV, although early showings weren't exactly stellar. A megalithic meteorite is careering toward the Earth. You have three punches to destroy it and save the planet, a truly Herculean task. My show is kicking with maximum height. Say video power. Yeah, that's right. Word. Now, I'm kind of obsessed with that last theme song. It's like they decided to hire a Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch cover band because they couldn't afford the $12 to hire the real thing. But why should we care whether or not esports is even shown on television? The esports legitimacy complex is a whole different topic altogether, but let's assume for the moment that the best thing for esports is mainstream attention. Televised broadcast is a fast way to get there. It will generate a bigger audience than could even be achieved through Twitch. Bigger audiences rather mean bigger and better tournaments, elevating the overall quality of play. To take this to the other logical extreme, if the AFL wasn't as big as it is, the 2017 Carlton Football Club would be considered a good team. And let's not sully this program with a lie like Carlton is a good football team. Besides, this way, if I spend the whole weekend watching EVO, I'll no longer have to lie to my colleagues and tell them that I spent the whole time doing something less stigmatised, like, I don't know, chronic masturbation. However, as much as I want to spend my weekend watching esports on the small screen, especially when it's unsullied by Twitch chat, I'll be the first to admit that most competitive gaming is unbroadcastable. The perfect examples of this are Dota 2 and League of Legends, two of the most popular esports titles. Unless you play these games, however, everything about them is incomprehensible. Dead, a BKB activated, now there's the Kuriel! Universe, he's locked down three! Now, picks up the TP and Will as well! High side, Dice, he's not gonna be here for this fight! Chaotic offering being dropped down immediately, BKB being activated by the Juggernaut, the disruption... I'm confused watching that, and I played Dota. You show that to someone who religiously watches the Big Bang Theory and you'll blow their minds. They'll enter a fugue state when all they can say is Bazinga. Well, more so than usual. Even a seemingly more accessible game like Counter-Strike Global Offensive is really less about the shooting and more about economy management. Think of it as being the perfect opposite of US elections, which should be about the economy but all people care about are the guns. Even if you solve the accessibility problem though, there is still one massive hurdle esports has to get over, and that is public perception. People get strangely defensive when you label something non-physical as sport. It's particularly bad here in Australia, where we spend most of our time debating knife taxonomy. Take this clip for instance from Weekends Today, the show you watch when TV static is just a little bit too mentally stimulating. In March, the hosts had a discussion on whether esports should be included in the Olympics. 50% of the group reacted exactly as you'd expect. Can I just make that very clear? This should not be an Olympic sport on. because it's not a sport. But hang on. You, you, I can you, have a spelling bee isn't a sport. You know, the you, only thing play, moving are thumbs that is not a sport. Well, it doesn't yeah. matter, that is entertainment, yeah. not sport. Ah yes, the age-old debate tactic of repeating your point over and over and over. It's why the World Debate Champion for the fifth year running continues to be these guys. By the way, that is a reference which is too dated for our younger audience and too new for the oldies. Why did I go with it? Still, 
the stigma will only go away with time and exposure to televised esports. To get to this point, tournament organizers are going to have to make some minor changes to the way esports is currently presented. Not just for TV's sake, but also to make it broadly more accessible. And I think they can start with two things. Firstly, they have to slow down the commentary. Get super shouty and fast during the hype moments, but also slow down to explain the significance of the smaller moments which led to the big play. It's the childish Gambino theory. You don't have to be a rap god all the time. You can still get a hit with a slow jam. And secondly, they need to give viewers a reason to care about these professional players. Tell the stories about these competitors. Get viewers emotionally invested in their fates. Even stepping away from the player portraits, viewers will get behind a team if they're held out as the underdog, the heel, or the perennial loser. Oh, hey Cloud9. These are just the starting step for making esports more palatable for television. And even the tiniest push in this direction will build momentum, viewers, and the pedigree of esports we see generally. The next thing you know, you'll be bored senseless as the office bros spend all of Monday talking about the latest Hearthstone tournament. And once we hit that point, you'll know that esports has made it. Oh, we can just forget about this whole esports business and watch more dog jumping. It's neck and neck on the near side. It's extremely salty, you had them. Now here comes the whip it. Can it turn it over? Not going to get there, though. Not going to get there. An extremely salty take it. <laughs> Who needs esports when you have those cute, adorable pup esports? And that is everything that has happened in the world ever.